questions? So then, thank you very much, Alexios. That was really a, a great talk. So the next speaker will be Akor Such. We have been working together. I don't even remember how many years. Uh, I think uh, very successfully, and uh, I am very pleased to to ask you for your talk on the way to Champions Way. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, when you asked me to, to give this lecture, this lecture, this is a great honor to me, but you did not define the title and the topic of, of, of that whole lecture. So, uh, or, or common life in the past is very well known for, for everybody, I, I believe. So that's why I, I figured out that it's better to, to introduce the, the Semmelweis University instead of the HPSG. Uh, for the for the audience, uh, I would like to show you the data of the first Department of Surgery. The name nowadays is the Department of Surgery and Transplantation and Gastroenterology. In that five-year period, we performed two thousand and uh, in Hungary, they performed two thousand and seven hundred pancreatic resections. This means this is more than five five hundred operations per year. You can see from the slide in Semmelweis University performed uh, more than a quarter of all cases from pancreatic resections. These are just the elective resections. Uh, there are the other uh, hospitals without names, of course, as you can see, the, even the mortality rate is one of the best in the Semmelweis University. The 60 days mortality is below 4% uh, in the last year. We had less than 2% of uh, 60 days mortality. At the outpatient clinic, we see every year seven to uh, 900 patients per year, which means more than 1,000 cases per year. This is true also for the endoscopy, uh, almost uh, 2,000 gastroscopy, uh, 2,000 colonoscopy, and the ERCP and the AOS uh, cases are all, uh, representing also a high volume center endoscopies uh, also similarly to, to, to the surgery. We were discussing center of excellence of pancreatic diseases and the uh, uh, close collaboration between Semmelweis University, between the departments of the Semmelweis University. And it is very important to do that. Monitor Jackson said also, do one not alone. So in the past, we have several departments collaborating with us. Uh, from gastroenterology, radiology, endocrinology, oncology, pathology, interventional radiology, and basic sciences in the treatment of that patient. Uh, my, the topic of my talk would be, uh, instead of talking about the clinical uh, uh, aspects of that collaboration, to, some, uh, to show you some, some uh, words about the scientific collaboration with that department uh, uh, at the Samovac University. Uh, we checked the PNET operations in that 15-year uh, uh, period at the first department of surgery, and we found we operated almost 90 patients with uh, proof PNET uh, in that uh, uh, period. Majority of the patients were completely symptom-free. Uh, what is interesting that only one third of the patient had preoperative biopsy. Uh, and in the majority of the uh, finding the expression biopsy was not informative. This is the uh, operational types uh, uh, provided for, for that patient with uh, absolutely acceptable morbidity and mortality rate, mortality rate. As you can see, the TNM stage of that patient, that one third, one third, one third in T, uh, T1, T2, and T3 uh, uh, stage of that patient, the majority was grade one and grade two, and only a small percentage showed grade C uh, uh, differentiation. What we could find that there was a significant difference, and this is free, free survival between the PT1 and PT2 groups, which is quite uh, 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 normal. Uh, one small part of the peanut was absolutely interesting, interesting to us, the non-functioning tumors, which are smaller than two centimeters, because according to the guidelines, these uh, proportion of the uh, uh, peanuts not always requiring surgery. 
what we found that in that uh, uh, group of patients, uh, four patients had grade C and two patients had uh, neuroendocrine carcinoma uh, in the final uh, pathological examination. And what we can see on the, uh, uh, on the disease-free survival, that in the grade three tumors, the disease-free survival is less than one year. Uh, five patients has liver mats within, within one year. So without doing surgery, probably that patient would have a very poor uh, prognosis also. So we can conclude uh, based on all data that if the risk for the operation is acceptable, regardless of the size, the operation seems to be more beneficial than the close follow-up. And of course, we have to develop in the preoperative diagnostics, uh, diagnostics as well. Uh, thanks to Borkokati, the cell block technique uh, is getting developed nowadays. We also uh, are collaborating with the international radiology, or we have the uh, the chance in the last uh, we had the chance in the last ten years to do the international radiological uh, biliary interventions by our own with with Attila Seattle. Uh, and and that era we have done uh, 600 uh, interventions, biliary interventions, uh, percutaneous transhepatic biliary interventions uh, uh, in that 12 years. Uh, the success rate was uh, 95%. The rating intervention rate was uh, quite small, uh, not bigger than 3%. And we have acceptable numbers of minor and major complications. The minor com majority of the minor complication was the cholangitis, which is quite a common complication for that. Uh, as we check the perihelar obstructions, uh, we found that if the patient had ERCP before, that the uh, complication rate was significantly higher. Uh, compared to the uh, percutaneous transhepatic drainage alone. It is also inter interesting to see your learning curves because all the interventions was, was done by Attila and me. So it was quite easy to check the learning curves for that. So we, we found that in, in, the, in the second, third year of or, or, or treatment, we are getting much more brave and we will be able to, to reach the internal drainage much more frequently. Uh, however, the complication rate was significantly dropped out. And at that, that era, probably we were blind enough to be brave enough. So, uh, based on our interventional radiological expert, uh, together with the endoscopist, we would like to check uh, which uh, treatment uh, can be feasible for, for the treating of benign biliary. Uh, stricture because this is a typical multidisciplinary approach uh, with surgery, with radiology, and with uh, endoscopic interventions as well. And we found, it, however, the surgical operation seems to be the most beneficial. It was that it was not significant, but based on our findings, uh, all the compared methods are significantly superior to the single plastic stand placement. I believe that in, 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 in Hungary, nobody's using single plastic stand uh, at all for treating benign biliary structures. We try to do innovations as well, according to that topic, benign biliary structures, and we found out that probably the balloon dilatation of that benign biliary structures combined with corticosteroid in injection can be effective for a long-term long structure resolution uh, so we figured out the methods for that, and also uh, uh, developing a, a, a needle for that, uh, and we will be able to uh, inject targetedly the stricture uh, uh, based on chronic pancreatitis or anastomotic stricture with benign origin, and we found that the stricture resolution rate of the street treatment was absolutely significant. We, we have done a pilot study, one of other patients are uh, ongoing treatment on that. Uh, we had no major complication. Only one patient had a cholangitis. During the long follow-up, uh, there were no any preoclusion uh, uh, found in this, uh, in this setup. So we can say probably that that percutaneous transhepatic corticosteroid injection combined with balloon dilatation 
could provide an alternative method for treatment of, of that patients. We also try to figure out uh, uh, in a non-benign setup, uh, what kind of biomarkers uh, can be useful for us to determine uh, the uh, aggressivity of a malignant tumor or being able to discover malignant tumor in time. Of course, at first we uh, investigated the well-known CA99 for, uh, for checking any effect on presentability rate in, uh, in surgical setups. Of course, the CA99 is a fair ma marker uh, based on all findings, but, uh, but uh, uh, it, was, it was not good enough for using as a re reliable marker for deciding resection just based on the CA99 levels. So it should not be used on its own surgical decision making. What kind of other possibilities do we have to find biomarkers to being able to discover the pancreatic cancer in time? Exocerebral vesicles has a very long past in the first, uh, in the Semmelweis University based on any Buzash uh, 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 investigations. The exocerebral vesicles are lipid bilayers, particles which can carry proteins, nucleic acids, metabolics, uh, with a lot of information inside, which can play important role in the intercellular communication of, of that. So we decided to, uh, to isolate exocellular, try to isolate exocellular vesicles for the first time from pancreatic juice obtained in the operation and uh, doing the following examinations. We firstly described the presence of extracellular vesicles in human pancreatic juice samples, uh, and uh, we will be able to identify uh, proteins, which can be a possible candidate markers for, uh, for pancreatic cancers. Of course, we have to uh, continue that, uh, that uh, study to, uh, to find the direct biomarkers for that. So what we're doing now is to check in EVs from, for uh, pancreatic cystic neoplasias, also with the aim of finding potential biomarkers for assessing the risk of malignancy. We try to correlate it with PCCT, photon counting CD as well. There's a long, 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 long going trial, the pair trial, because knowing that, uh, checking the uh, uh, effect of, of uh, uh, preoperative biliary drainage on the overall uh, complication rate of, of pancreatic resections. Also, we are checking the effect of the percutaneous transhepatic biliary drainage on the treatment of surgical complications as well. And uh, there's an ongoing uh, project to, to check the sensitivity of PCCD in different pancreatic diseases as well. So thank you very much for your kind attention. And of course, uh, we have to work on that being together for the Champions League as well, which is good for Peter. Thank you very much. Really very good summary and very nice summary about uh, all the efforts we have, uh, you have made actually uh, in the past. Uh, uh, actually, my question would be about uh, uh, the, the limitations, the difficulties, and concerning the future plans. You showed plenty of small parts, of course, very elegantly about which directions you went further, but but what you think, what are the limitations which uh, should be handled uh, in the center? Difficult question, if I have to be polite. Uh... Oh, you don't, we are not ourselves. The problem of the, okay, Samuel's Unity University has to be a center of excellence from one side and have to be a basic healthcare professional as well. Too much patience, too much effort with less uh, human resources, with hard to organize that. And this structure would not provide a possibility for, for, for doing center of excellence or doing excellence. This is the biggest difficulty for that. There are a lot of small difficulties as well. 
how to deal with that lot of departments, how, how to, how to uh, communicate with them, how to organize them into, uh, under one umbrella and so on. These are the smaller problems for that. The, the initial one is, I believe, the, the bigger. You see the human resources. Not only the, yeah, mainly the human resources, the finances, the organizations, the ads itself. A very nice talk indeed. And I, I'm interested in the Pennines and all the subjects that come by, treated uh, by BPD and stereos. But we'll do with the smokers because in my practice, the only way to stop smoking first and dilate the biliary stenosis later on, mainly in chronic pancreatitis, but even other. The decision making was quite simple in that state because if we would like to do something new, then of course we have to uh, use very strict limitation. So we have to exclude all the patients who are not suitable for surgery, who are not suitable for endoscopy, and who whose general condition is poor enough for doing all that that are other uh, interventions for that. So the remaining patients, of course. Sometimes they are smoking because of smoking, they are not uh, uh, feasible for, for endoscopy as well. So un unfortunately, we could not do that, that uh, differentiation between smokers and non-smokers as hopefully we can, can possibly, this is the last chance for them. But I absolutely agree, knowing your opinion about that, stop smoking. <laughs> 